Live from the Talking Joe studios. It's Talking Joe with Chief and Mark. Talking Joe is on the air, and here are your hosts, Chief and Mark. Hey, hey, hey! Chiefy Two Hats in the house, joined by you. It's Mark the Helmet, that's what they call me. Mark the Helmet, new nickname. Funky Bunch is now the Helmet, the Funky no, he's Helmet. Not. He's really not. <laughs> oh, dear. Uh, yes, yes. I don't know if that means the same thing worldwide, but um, okay, fine. You can stay as Funky Bunch, but. Um, Good to catch up with you. Last time we spoke was Christmas Eve. Now um, it is not... Well, as this lands, it will be New Year's Eve. How has your Christmas been, my friend? Yeah, it's been good. You know, over in the UK, we've had a little bit of Christmas disruption, so didn't quite have the uh, Christmas that we thought we might have the uh, the, the day before. But uh, yeah, it's been okay. Yeah, we uh, sort of stayed in, had some nice Christmas lunch, had too much turkey and Brussels sprouts, yep. and which also meant too much farting afterwards. Yeah, uh, that's but it. yeah, <laughs> good Christmas generally. What about yourself? Yeah, not bad. As as of recording, this is the twenty eighth of December, and I am still eating Christmas leftovers. Oh, of course, yeah. Yes, yes. Five, and four days, four days. This is no 25, 26, 20, Yeah, four days uh, <laughs> of eating this. We had a Christmas chestnut mushroom wreath from Marks and Spencer's. Oh my god! Still good. Just finished it off. Put it in a wrap this morning uh, with a tomato um, jalapeno chili uh, relish thing, and it was very nice. Had that for lunch, but and how do you feel about post Christmas mince pies? Oh, oh, yeah, it should be a year round thing. Mince pies <laughs> should not be relegated just to Christmas. So, I'm hoping to pop down to the shop after recording this and see if I can get some discounted because Ooh. those supermarkets don't want to sell them anymore. Uh, the other thing I have been doing is watching movies and. I need to watch five movies in four days. But obviously, when this lands, 31st of December, this episode, I will be on the last day. Can Chief make it? Uh, find out. There might even be a, a January Out of Timers Letterbox Year in Review show. Where Sounds me good. And ben Sounds good. Go through the highs and lows. And he basically says to me, Chief, why are you watching so many crap movies? <laughs> but we'll see. Uh, yeah, so I got. Uh, I think I can do it, but I do need to double dip on one day. Mm, to, to make okay. it to the 200 we'll yeah. see i watched uh, karate kid just ah, the yes. other night Yeah, Karate Kid number one, which I believe was 1984. Okay, yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah, I haven't watched it since I was but a young Karate Kid myself. Any good? Uh, without, without the karate. Yeah, good. Really enjoyed good. it. Yeah, good. Excellent. Have, is, have you seen it any time recently? No, no. I might revisit it. I've got a few classics lined up. Um, to do, but uh, in the new year might might have a bit of a kid kid action. Sounds bad, doesn't it? Might have a bit of karate kid action. Doesn't sound much yeah, better. But I'd recommend yeah. it. It's okay. uh, yeah, it was a it was a treat. Unfortunately, we do have to go inside Chief Soapbox of a Mind. Ah. It's dark. It's cold. Can you be brave? Can you be bold? Sit to get on, you don't know what you'll find. Digging in deep into Chief's mind. Inside Chief's mind. So, listen, a uh, quick house update, because I know no one cares except me, not even you. But uh, we know that I had a few problems with the house, with the lease, and then the ceiling collapsed. Then the gutter was flooding downstairs garden, and then my window broke. Um, so I got the gutter fixed, I got the window repaired, then my Hoover, my Dyson Hoover, my £200 Dyson Hoover broke. That sucks. Then my kettle, yeah. <laughs> then my kettle broke, and then my podcasting headphones broke. And we had determined that this was a Romany gypsy curse placed on the house because the woman that we bought it <laughs> off was indeed Romanian, and I think okay. she was a gypsy. And therefore, she cursed the house. The okay. house does not want us to leave. 
Mm, she is dragging you to hell. There Jeez. you go. And a bit of personal information that no one wants to know, but me and the missus were trying for a kid for about a year, and then the first night we moved into this house, boom, there you go. <laughs> so uh, other, yeah. might, other people might say that's a blessing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> cursed. <laughs> cursed, I tell you. Um, <laughs> so, yeah, no, the house wanted us oh, to dear. stay. That's what I'm, that's what I'm saying. I, no, you've twisted my words there. Um, but the house, want, the house yes, gifted yes. us a child and then said, don't ever leave. Uh, fortunately, slight bit of good news. Chief did fix the Hoover, um, did fix the headphones, but did have to buy a new kettle. But we're still, you know, movie's still on. Hopefully, the next four or five weeks, we shall see. We shall see. But Very uh, good. But are we going to talk about New Year's resolutions? Oh, not? we can talk about New Year's resolutions. Shall we do a New Year's resolution soaks box special? We can do one. This might get edited because Ben might not want me to reveal him on this show. He might want to reveal him on Out of Timers. But I'll do this <laughs> segment anyway that might not <laughs> okay. see the air. <laughs> oh, dear. Soapbox, soapbox. What you gonna do? What you gonna do when Chief comes for you with his views and opinions? Let's just call them facts. Soapbox, soapbox, how will the world react? So, uh, we know that last year, Chief, if you listen to the Out of Timers, Chief had a lot of resolutions. One was to watch Star Wars every week for a year. Failed that in week one. Uh, another one was to learn Japanese. Uh, did not even try that, I don't think. Uh, another one was to maybe lose two kilograms i think i gained six kilograms in weight um and there was some others that oh the 200 movie challenge might be the only one i do and it would be bad news if i didn't do that uh, in 2020 but for 2021 there's a couple of new potentials on the table one is to read all of judge dread from Mm. the prog and the magazine which is the equivalent of about seven to eight hundred us us sized comics in terms of page count uh, that is a lot to read in a year. Another one is to paint the remaining Star Wars Imperial Assault miniatures. About 60 to go. Average of, you know, uh, what's that? Just over one a week. That sounds hard. And another one is to do the splits. Splits. It's, it's back to stretching on this show again. Back to stretching. If you thought you'd had enough of stretching, you clearly hadn't. Um, but yeah. Any resolutions for you? Normal resolution? None. Yes, Just, I like that man. I like that man. I'm think I said to Ben though the other day I did a U-turn. I said I'm scrapping all resolutions. I changed my mind. I'm not doing any. I don't want my life to be defined by targets and goals. Goals are the enemy. Um, <laughs> That's why you never made it as a professional aim footballer. Aim low. Aim low. Uh, achieve that bar. Um, now I want to talk about action figures. Now it's time for action figure fiasco. Action. Yes, um, let's do my one first, then we'll move on to maybe Thomas. Uh, So I've sent you a pic of this guy. It's a Marvel Legends. It is a Age of Apocalypse Apocalypse. Now, this is him in his kind of light blue outfit with uh, red and kind of a dark blue trim. Now, he's quite a big figure there. I'll put up some pictures. I'll I'll pose him next to a regular six-inch style figure. He is in the six-inch range, but he is big. He's a deluxe figure. Retails about 29 quid, 28, 9, 29 quid. And I think I got him for 20 on a a Christmas deal. Or Black Friday deal, sorry. Now, I am thinking about selling him straight away. Mm. A lot of problems with this guy. The look on a few poses looks great. Uh, He's got an open kind of clenched you know an open hand you know that power hand whatever then a couple of fisted hands head you got a head swap one with open mouth one with kind of a grimace then he comes with a skull that he can hold in his hand of his vanquished Uh enemies comes with a cape which unfortunately is really hard plastic and falls off all the time he's got an ab crunch which is a bit loose because he's very top heavy and one of the biggest problems is he's got these massive red gauntlets that block the bicep so he can't even get a 90 degree between the upper and lower arm uh, Mm. bend so really restrictive on articulation just really not that impressed with this guy big guys are harder to do because they're bigger and the articulation is not great but you know i've got the hell bat batman i've got the crimson dynamo figure which i might cover on the next one which is really good um some predators which are big some other guys you know and you can do big guys and have them articulated and this is just overly muscled on the bicep and just overall not a great figure oh dear there you yeah. go there you go and i don't really want to talk about very, him anymore. 
Yeah, it's very shiny as well, isn't he? Shiny. Um, you know, I got him because in the package looks like a good figure and the Age of Apocalypse era of X-Men really liked. It's one of those ones where you get it out of the packet and did not live up to expectations. Probably should have watched some online video reviews but got suckered in to the bargain price. <laughs> oh dear. Anyway, um, Thomas got some toys for Christmas or should I say Thomas got some and you played with them or you played with them and he played <laughs> with them or you got them and then let Thomas play with them. But is there any particular one that he wanted to talk about today? Yes. Good. <laughs> Run that audio clip. Kids with toys. Kids with toys. Kids with toys. Family. Kids with toys. My little pony. Kids with toys. Star Wars. Kids with toys. Transformers. Kids with toys. Lego. Kids with toys. G.I. Joe. Yo, Joe. Hello, today we are reviewing on a toy. What? I just got it today. Okay, it's it's an unboxing. Unboxing time. And what is it? So, uh, it's a guy dressed in white who's a ninja. Yep. It's a classified series Arctic Mission Storm Shadow. Okay, you were mentioning on the, you noticed something on the box which I hadn't even noticed. Yeah, what was that? There's a cobra symbol on the top, and the Jews have a star on the top, mm. which is interesting. Yeah, so they've uh, they've identified him as a cobra. I would actually not agree with him being a cobra. I, I'd say that he'd be a Joe. Okay, let's pop this bad boy out and we can start looking at the figure. Whoa! Whoa, Nelly, there we go. This figure is so detailed. So he's got, he's like white and, and black, and, and I mentioned that he's, t- they've taken inspiration for him from the version 3 Storm Shadow toy, uh, which I think was originally released as a Ninja Force series Storm Shadow. And he has this white Assassin's Creed style hood, right? Yeah. And look what happens. Boop. And now he has a black hood like snake eyes. <laughs> uh, he has like a golden thing, a bit like... A hexagram, the, yeah. is it the Arishikage symbol on yeah. his chest? Okay, that's cool. Uh, there's also like a golden bit on his belt. Wait, mm-hmm. why am I just mentioning the golden bits on him? Because mm-hmm, you're a little magpie drawn to the gold. I like how there are like little spots of white on his black armour. Mm-hmm. Yeah, sort of like speckling down. So what what does he come with? He comes with a sword and a uh, sheath for the sword. Yeah, scabbard and a, a bow and an arrows indi- that can go on his back. An individual, yeah, a, a backpack with arrows and an individual arrow. arrow. What's that? Uh, oh, that's a harvesting sort of tool, isn't it? A sickle, it? a little mini scythe thing. That's what you mean. Yeah, yeah sort of. And a, a grapple hook. And a grapple hook. So it looks like the sword can go into the sheath into which... the backpack. No, the the um the scabbard thing can go into the um into the backpack or directly into his back. Yeah. Wait, now I now you're just it's... getting out the bow. I think it's cool. You can sort of pose these figures, can't mm-hmm. you? Like for instance, you might be shooting an arrow. You might put the bow in his hand and uh, the arrow in the other hand. By the way. I think this might be the arrow that hit Hardmaster. That could be a story, couldn't it? It could be that he saved that arrow that hit the Hardmaster and he's going to plan to reuse that arrow to take his revenge. Mm. That might be cool if that was actually what happened. I think he's going to take his revenge with a sword. Poked out his eyes, twisted his head. Zartan dropped to the floor dead. (laughs) Hmm. So we've done the sword and the sheath, the bow and the arrow, and uh, now it's time to do the sickle. Snake Eyes doesn't actually have a sickle, does he? Not even a bicycle. (laughs) In conclusion, what do we think of this figure? Uh, I give it an 8 out of 10. Cool. And do you think he's going to be a Cobra or a G.I. Joe when you play with him? A Joe. It's because I've read the comics more than mm-hmm. watched the movies and mm-hmm. things. Yeah. So next time we might have a whole bunch of Christmas presents for you to talk about. Uh, 
Um, that's because tomorrow maybe is Christmas. What day is it, boy? Christmas Eve. Okay. All right. Um, thank you, and I hope I see you again. Bye. Okay, Storm Shadow making an appearance here, and he did the some three and three quarter inch Storm Shadows the other week, and now That's he's moving right, on to yeah. a six inch one. Um, yeah, do you, do you think we'll get a regular Storm Shadow in this classified line? Uh, yeah, for sure, for sure. It's yeah. um, they've they've hinted it at him uh, in terms of the artwork that's been released. So yeah, we will definitely uh, see a Storm Shadow somewhere along the line and uh yep. i would be surprised if it wasn't one of the next ones an- announced because yep. yeah i'm pretty sure he's waiting in the wings was this one this arctic one was this one you were on the fence about when they announced it or were you fully on board with it from the get-go yeah i was somewhat on the fence i mean the original version three that i think this is based on um i wasn't a massive fan of it you know from that ninja force era um, so yeah, I would have preferred the version one or version two inspired look, right. but uh, yeah, given that that was the one that was available, that's the that's the one we went for. <laughs> that's the one you're going for, yeah. Well, fair fair play. You know, they they seem to have tightened up the line a little bit as well in terms of listening to fans. And um, I know this was an earlier one, but um, looking at the rest of the line that's coming out now, they seem to, you know, not not necessarily sticking to all original ideas and thought processes willing to give the fans a little bit of what they want while still maintaining their original designs yeah i'm a big fan of the the range generally so uh, yeah i look forward to uh, the next lot coming out and uh, yeah thomas got a few <laughs> a few christmas presents so uh, yeah yeah we might even have some on the toy box in the future good good stuff good stuff after that we need to digest some comics comic talk Oh, comic talk. Barry Hammer writes them cheap and Mark discuss them. Whoa, comic talk. Oh, comic talk. Barry Hammer writes them cheap and Mark discuss them. Whoa. Okay, on the slate this week. Now, it was labelled originally, I think, as a five part storyline, but in actual fact, like you said last week, they broke it up, didn't they? And it ended up being a four part storyline artificial intelligence. It runs through issues 261, 262, then it had a break, uh, and then they came back for 264, 265. That's so right. it's a f- four parter. And then, you lucky TJ listeners out there, you'll get a bonus episode, I think, a little 20 minute bonus episode covering that missing 263 sometime next week, probably, um, or maybe Ooh. even the end of this week. We'll see. Uh, but here we come. We can this do what we issue. like. Yeah, we can do what we want. We, we're the, we're yeah. the, we're the masters so demanding. of the world. We just do, you know. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, so artificial intelligence. Uh, we got Larry Harmer, Nitho Diaz, Nitho Diaz back on pencils with uh, Kumar on inks and Jay Brown on colours. And um, uh, let's look at the covers. Favorite cover. I think I've got all the A covers for these four that I'm holding yeah, here. Me too. Yeah. Baroness Destro, uh, Nitho Diaz with some with the Alpha Zero Zero One behind. Mm-hmm. Lots of green glow. Um, I like the colour on this. I like the green kind of neon. Mm-hmm. And then John Royal does a Falcon with Crocmaster deeping at him. It, yeah, nothing to do with the insides. Come on, Royal, get with it. <laughs> and uh, Klaus Schawinski um, well does. Done. Is that Beachhead? I, I've got the only got the small one on the yeah, inside yeah, cover. Yeah, it's Beachhead, sort of pinned down by far, isn't it? Favorite of those three, just out of interest. Uh, I think the cover A by Diaz. I yep. think is preference okay. out of those. Uh, 262 we've got is that Ripcord on the front? That is Ripcord and okay. that cover is a, a homage to the original Ripcord box card art, art to right, the cover, okay. Co- yeah, yeah card art, thank you yeah. Chief um, Not a fan of this one particularly Oh really? Okay uh, Don't particularly like the colours the image feels a little bit I don't know, I don't like the perspective either but there you go Oh well yeah, I don't mind. I think it's right. But, okay, uh, John Royal, think. Crystal Ball and Snake Eyes is the cover B. Yeah, a scene that doesn't happen in the book, but I yeah. think Crystal Ball does appear potentially in these few issues. Yes, so he does. Yes, you're right. Pass. And then the retailer then... incentive is by Blackie Shepherd, and it mm. is Baroness. Again, I've only got the small insert. Is not it's wowing me, I'll be honest. Pretty bland, isn't it? Yes. I'm going for the Crystal Ball version. one as my favourite of these three. Okay. Just because he's a nutter. Summary, balls up. Okay, <laughs> lovely. Uh, and then two, six, four. Cover A, Destro Baroness. Looks like they're on a chessboard. Yeah. And there's some 
a robotic cyborgish clawed hand in the foreground. Cover B is Dan Fragger mm. and Adeloso Corona. Yes, that would do. And uh, that is a two-parter cover we've got in the next issue. We've got the ah, other side of it? it, so it's got the right, Joe let me open up the other one then. coming in from the left ah, yes, yes. against a white background. And it's reminded me of something. I'm not entirely sure what, okay. but, you know, possibly some of those uh, Order of Battle covers or, or whatnot, something along those lines. Yeah, yeah. Um, then we've got a retail incentive by Tim Latty, is it? Yeah, sort of. And that is, who's that? Is that um, Keelhall? Keelhall, yeah. Cover. That's my favourite one, actually. I like the style. Yeah, I wouldn't dis- necessarily dis- disagree. Yeah, and then we've, uh, you've probably got the same in, in yours. Underneath those three covers, we've got a whole bunch of different pictures of Snake Eyes, Silent Master variant toy packaging yes. art, yes. which is potentially a goof i'm not entirely sure but in a couple of issues down the road in issue 266 which is the first issue of snake hunt yeah they they show those covers again right in the back in the back of the book so um i don't know whether it was done twice or maybe okay. this one was done a little bit prematurely or, or what but yeah we'll right. get we'll get a chance to see those ones uh, again okay down the All road right. interesting and then finally, 265, we've got the Snake Eyes and who's that? Just some random cobra? That's, I think, a, the random uh, terrorist that gets taken down okay. in the yep. uh, previous issue, I guess. Okay, this is the one, this is the issue 265, 265, where the missus found it on the sofa yesterday and said, uh, these comics should not be out in the house. They are too violent and pornographic. So Won't she somebody said, think of the children? Chief. All comics should be in the loft, she says. Um, mm. So yeah, do you let your kids uh, re? You know, would you have a problem letting your kids see that cover? Zero problem. Okay, let me move but. to your house. Um, <laughs> then we've got cover B, which is like you said, the the Dan Fragger Cobra part uh, yeah. of that double page one, and then the retail incentive is Sean Beck with a kind of stylized Dawn, mm, which is not my cup of tea. No, it's kind of smacking of bad fan art to me yeah yeah but uh yeah sorry sean beck but um not my cup of tea there you go we'll post all the covers up on the socials so you can know what we're talking about but now fill us in on what's going on it's time for a plot breakdown in Shadazar, two joe teams converge in a shootout with the green morning extremists through shara city they drive up into wild bill c-130 while still on the move Covergirl and Repeater push the Chenworth off the C-130 as it flies away. Joystick manoeuvres his drone into range and fires a Hellfire missile, taking out both the abandoned Chenworth full of the C-4 explosives and the bad guys too. Meanwhile in Kansas, Destro and Baroness are clearing out a revanche boss fortress and escape this subterranean silo, blowing it up. As they do, the end of level boss Alpha 001 Prime emerges, entangling the Aspid helicopter in its metal tentacles. Destro and the Baroness get zapped in the neck by cables and become drones of Revanche, along with their Iron Grenadiers. Later, beneath Revanche HQ, Destro Borg is dispatched down to check the security of the tunnels and the sewers. They run into a G.I. Joe recon team of Lowlight and Lightfoot. During a firefight, Destro's prosthetic hand is shot off he discovers he can control it remotely. When Destro returns to Revanche HQ, he uses it to remove the Baroness's control device. At the Statue of Liberty, a terrorist group is holding hostages with Throwdown and Scarlet jumping from the Tomahawk to deal with the situation. The whole thing was caught on camera by a nearby news copter and everybody could see Snake Eyes doing his thing. In Springfield, Cobra Commander is furious when he sees Throwdown and assumes that Snake Eyes is alive. And finally, in Kalingaville, the original October Guard is alive and well. They mobilise to thwart the Cobra operation against their old foe, Snake Eyes. Sure do. You said a mouthful there, pal. And this I sure is, did. This is confusing and not good at the same time. <laughs> and that's excluding all of the little subplots going on as well. Yeah. Yeah. There's a, there was a whole lot going on across these uh, these issues and yes. uh, yeah here there and everywhere. Yeah, how, I mean, how how should we how do you want to tackle this? Do you want to tackle each kind of mini plot in turn, or do you want to yeah. just go through the issues? What's the best way here? Yeah, let's talk about sort of the the main plots or, sure. or scenes with the various different characters. Should we start with Nitho Diaz back on art? Um, yes. How how are you feeling about the art across these? Uh, uh, these I think I prefer it to his Dawn of the Russia Kage 
run, mm-hmm. but still he, and again, there's no, no disrespect to the man, but he's not a draw for me. You know, it's not a case mm-hmm. of brilliant. Nito Diaz is back on art. It's more of a, uh, Nito Diaz is back on art. So it's not, <laughs> it's not bad art at all, but it's just not really doing anything for me. Yeah. 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 I get, I there's get that. There's a few I mean, nice it's... panels and as we come to them, you know, I'm happy to point them out that, that I actually do like, but on the whole, Again, like I say, it's not bad, but just not for me. It's you know, it's it's sort of serviceable, and by no means is it is it bad, and and it's, it's enjoyable. And he obviously yeah. he likes to he likes to try and make things quite energetic and and sort of splashy and and bit of an impactful image. Uh, so in places, it looks almost cartoony. It's quite interesting yeah. that um, in the issue, uh, the first of these these issues in the center pages where the staples are, there's uh, this. I guess what do we call them insurgents on on a minigun on the top of his practical tactical. Technical. Uh, what, technical whatever you want to call them yeah. <laughs> let's call the whole thing off brapping away and uh he's, he's you know his expression there is looking uh quite cartoony yes yeah kind of michael and, goldenish and, a bit yeah and flipping back one page to the previous page in the in the same place we've got a close-up of uh cover girl and sh- that face is looking almost rob liefeldian yeah 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 a bit more sort of serious look clenched teeth not actually mm-hmm. drawing the teeth and the, the kind of glossy open mouth lips yeah and then yeah. flicking flicking back two pages previously you've got is it the it's, yeah the chenworth um and it's bursting through something question mark yes um <laughs> blasting away and, and i guess that's an example of maybe going for an interesting dynamic splashy image but without necessarily it making masses of story level you know story sense per perhaps yeah yeah and this opening you know that that scene comes from the opening uh, bit of storyline which has carried on from the previous issues didn't it where the -hmm. guys are doing an exfil um they've got the un workers and the kids and now they're trying to get out of dodge yeah well i'm trying to just remember what happened well how does this does this wrap up this bit or not yeah i think it wraps up in that in that first issue weirdly enough you know given that this is part one of uh, a new part or it, it sort of does does wrap up pretty much in the well bill yeah. comes down in the um c130 yeah whatever, and i thought it was it was, thought it was quite a, it was quite a fun action sequence it was very much yeah like filmetic in terms of the uh the energy that they're trying to get yes. uh, get across there and the, like the kind of stunts that you might imagine coming across in a big blockbuster movie with uh, them pushing that Chenworth out the back of the uh, back of the C-130 etc yeah and then they got one missile left they blow them bastards right up <laughs> exactly yeah <laughs> That's, it. that's what they said smoke <laughs> smoke them smoke them scumbags and then we're out of here so that kind of wrapped up that little storyline there was a little bit in there that that stuck out um which was funny on it was on page one actually um they're talking to the guard and they say wait the guard is something is saying something to dusty dusty speaks arabic farsi and pashto and i think that might be doing some service to the people pointing out that uh, why are you introducing mongoose as a new arabic speaking specialist because right. you've got dusty who who is the the specialist and that, that s jobs pointed that out at the time when when mongoose was uh, introduced right so um yeah i think maybe a little bit of fan service there to say yeah 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 we know we know dusty or can actually speak or languages. larry had forgotten and then the editor reminded him um, or someone reminded him, the the, the mm-hmm. fans reminded him, oh yeah, Larry, you forgot that Dusty, and he's like, oh, fuck's sake, no, I'm going to have to put this line of dialogue <laughs> I think to so. them fans. <laughs> that right. sounds about okay. right. Got it, got it, cool. This, What's all this green stuff going on with all the, whenever time these uh, Alpha 001 shows up, there's all this neon green. This is kind of a new, new little colouring twist, is it? Just to differentiate them from regular Blue Ninjas, or is that just a stylistic choice? Oh, I, I don't know, I guess it's probably a stylistic choice. I can't say that I'd I'd clocked that the the green was a uh, new development which wasn't in the previous Blue Ninjas before. But yeah, definitely it's the kind of a a signature colour and uh, I guess a way of differentiating what's going going on in particular when, you know, creating that signature colour in the the green and the green eyes means that when Destro is taken over, you can then use that shorthand of having the green glowing eyes as a way of saying, look, there are revenge zombies yeah there's also just green fire and green explosion all over the place yeah 
Mm. Mm. Strange. Yeah, I guess the green farm maybe makes a little bit less sense. But no, no prize. It's uh, certain chemicals when yes. exposed to fire do burn green. So there you go. Uh, it's boom, not boom, boom. too outlandish. Yep, nothing in the post <laughs> for you. Um, and this this Alpha zero zero one seems to it's it's very much a Deus Ex Machina, isn't it? You know, whatever this this being needs it can fire these little tendrils out of his head with little claw thingies on and then it can mutate into some sort of crab spider thing and then it can you know, do whatever it needs to do and then i'm sure it'll be vanquished and another version will come along at some point probably and yeah indeed it's going it's, it's it was uh, putting me in a little bit uh, of of mind of a bit of this yeah, yeah love that tune that's a good one yeah because he is doing that actually yeah yeah he yes, does he it, does start uh, babbling away and soon the humans Concord. will be dead um no just explain something to me how is he how is he mind controlled destro baroness and the iron grenadiers again he, he's he's got his little um little what cable thing Tendral going things, out of him yeah. popping it in their old neck and uh using revanche science to uh, yes. to brainwash them and zeros and ones and and zero zero one one them yeah. right up just yeah. just yeah binary get solo in, get it up and, <laughs> and yeah. binary solo them right up love that tech. get it in destro you're done baroness you're done i'm going to dear army you're done yeah there we go see you later they are no more <laughs> Um, okay, well, they, you know, they, let's let's carry on this Destro bit then to its conclusion. This or, well, and what was quite funny was the fact that, that they talked about uh, they talked about it being a boss farm fortress. That's right. You know, using that gamer Video jargon, game, yeah. you know, working their way to the basement and working their way up to the top of the level before before the then uh, Alpha bursts out the the top as a as a, an enemy that had almost been defeated and, yes. and you're taking off and it comes out of the ground and latches onto the uh, helicopter yeah. um it's reminding me of various games but i can't for the life of me put my finger quite on the game <laughs> where right. where that has happened maybe you got better probably idea, resident but... evil the first one where they go yeah. to the, May- the top oh, right. story yeah, yeah, and there's the the nemesis creature whatever it is the tyrant and um the helicopter comes in and you've got to get a rocket launcher and you know he's trying to grab up to the helicopter etc but um he's also I got maybe Ge- Ge- gears of work war perhaps as oh, well. yeah. he's got something yeah. similar yeah, happening maybe. here but he's also got some kind of crazy Zartan shapeshifting ability because at the oh, start yeah, of 264, yeah. he's an iron grenadier and then you see him on the next page morph back into the alpha. Yeah, he so. sort of shrinks down. I guess so That's that's so that when they come back to uh to land at the, the cobra base or destro's base whatever it wherever yeah. it's they get then, then he's not sticking out as as being you know yeah. well i guess it means they can transport him for a start but yes. then also when he steps out of the the helicopter he's stood stood next to them saying zero 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 one zero 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 one uh yeah <laughs> destro says keep your eyes on me disregard the grenadier officer behind you yeah nothing yes. suspicious to see there no no um <laughs> And then he turns into a spider thing. And then there is a panel I quite like here in 265. It's about three or four pages in. And Alpha and Destro have just gone down into the sewer. And there's a panel at the top of the page where they're kind of both crouched down uh, with running water. And I don't know, something just about that, the, the composition of, of the pose is, and the kind of glowing green eyes are kind of like that panel. I think that's really cool. Yeah, cool. Yeah, Pete's got a few of the originals of these pages by... Uh... Diaz with the brothers Light, Lightfoot and Low Light. Ah, yes. They're yeah. teaming up. <laughs> and what was their mission? They're down in the sewer to do what? Do we know? They are to uh, investigate. Recon. The, Always uh, recon. Do some recon. Plant yeah. some sensors. You know, yeah, it is the recon. And it's <laughs> as they're speaking, they kind of seem to be uh, sort of just exposing pr- plot deficiencies in even in their dialogue. They said yes. that Entry point was suspicious, low light. I'm sure there were well hidden surveillance devices that we tripped. Said, this is the initial, just the initial recon, Lightfoot. Yeah, yeah we're shit. <laughs> we're we, we we're don't planting even know what sensors. We're doing. You know, if you're just doing uh, uh, Lightfoot, if you're just doing an initial recon, it doesn't matter if you trip all of the sensors. Yeah, yeah. Um, and this is the bit that you were referring to in the plot summary. Destro gets his hand blown off, mm-hmm. and. Some, this is where he realises that he says I can move my prosthetic right, prosthetic right hand even though it is detached from my wrist so he's now yeah. got like a crawling hand 
that he can control, kind of Adam's family ish. <laughs> <laughs> And that's not explained or anything, is it? That's just, it is what it is. And then I'm sc- scrolling to the back of the issue and there's some broken down head and I can't, I just can't really work out what's happening. He somehow has now debugged Baroness. Yeah, so, so... <laughs> what's happening here? Yeah, you kind of got leaps of logic. So, so he's figured out he, he's able to detach his hand and when he does detach his hand, it's able to... Um, use his conscious part of his brain rather than the revanche controlled part of the brain and that he is able to do something it makes it look like he's just maybe clicking in her ear yes to um, take her out of the trance but possibly it is that the hand is sort of creeping up behind her neck yeah. and rather than it just being a click maybe it's um removing a device from the back of her neck yeah hard to say I think I know sure, what but... it is I think I know what it is I think it's Destro bullshit <laughs> <laughs> Destro bullshit yeah. all the time Destro clicking his yeah. fingers and Destro bullshit okay let's let's move on to the next one I want to talk about Sightline because he has a new leg and as we predicted previously you know he's going to get this new leg it you know either Larry will forget about it or he will turn it into a storyline about this tech being in the leg that came from Cobra. And then we get a few back twists, uh, plot twists there as well, because Cobra Commander says to Mindbender, doesn't he, I know you sent the leg. We found your sensors. We replaced them, or, you know, tracking devices or something Mm. in the leg. We replaced them with something else. So lots of twists and turns going on. (laughs) Yeah. He said, well, I I put in my my own tracking and Cobra Cobra Commander says, oh, but I I found it and I double removed it and backseed trapped your leg. Yes, all well. the while though they're playing golf. <laughs> while they're playing golf. So we've seen them doing what? Bowling, mini golf, now mm-hmm. golf. So, you know, I don't know where they're going next. Snooker. <laughs> and sightline, so as as predicted, this leg is letting him jump higher, run faster, etc. And what, what you know, I guess it's I guess it's a tease for what's to come, but um where where do you see it going? How far ahead have you read? I've read most of the way ahead. I think it might get forgotten about. Okay, good, good. <laughs> we'll see. Okay, but uh, this this might be a good uh, segue into the first of my hammer times today. Yes, please. Hammer time. Time to beat the soles of your boots with my face. Sucking chest wounds, red ninjas, brain scanners, rubber hooses, blue ninjas. Some more sucking chest wounds. Hammer time. Yeah, so, um, Sightline, this plot, Claire and uh, Lifeline agree that they've never seen anything like it before. Mm. Uh, but I remember seeing something a bit like it before because it's it's a leg a lot like Billy's back in issue yes. 58, yes. which was a self-actuating, internally-powered, gyro-stabilised and tactile responsive leg, and that when he trips, he can do a massive jump and land in a modified low iron horse position. Yeah, I was just about to say um, all that. Can we call, can we call um, a bionic leg replacement a hammer time? Well, we did, so yes. <laughs> yes. Yes. It's, it's done. Answer. It's done. <laughs> Tis done. Um, shall shall I move on to my second hammer time yeah, for uh, the week while we're, while we're here? Um, it was in issue two six two when we we're on the subway with the thugs harassing the old man on the train. Ah uh, yes, and uh, he says the art uh, of martial arts is in attaining the level where you no longer have to use it, and that put me in mind of something. Can you guess what it might be? Something the soft master said. He, you, are, I'm sure, so Software Master has said something similar, but I was thinking specifically of the instance from issue 39 where Billy and Storm Shadow are facing some punks on the street uh, yes. who are sort of looking to him and just intimidate them. And he says, That's right. You've just learned the most important lesson in martial arts, Billy. The more skill you acquire, the less you have to use it. Yes. There you go. Larry dragging them back from the past. <laughs> yeah, a little bit of an odd sequence. I think it lasted maybe two pages. Yeah. Yeah, what was that sequence? They're on the subway, Milo, and who's the kid? Raymond, is it? Uh, and it's a new kid that I think he just meets on the uh, subway. Oh, Roland. Says, yeah, yeah, that's right. All right. Uh, I'm Roland. Yeah, he um, yeah. he just yeah notices uh, Milo's bogu bag. Yeah, strange, which, uh, strange little good... scene, that one expression um, and then there's yeah this old guy in a, a bruce lee yellow top 
who's sort of being intimidated. <laughs> but it's funny, he's, saying, he's sort of making a point of uh, saying that the boys should stay out of it. But they're some distance away from him and uh, they're looking over at it, him and uh, and he says, uh, I see you boys don't get involved, which immediately <laughs> means that the thugs turn on the boys and yes. saying, you looking to get in on this mess? We'll mess you up too. Yeah, <laughs> yeah thanks for Good thanks one. for that. Thanks for that, Grandpa. Good one, old man. Um, uh, and he's able to impress them with uh, the sound of one cl- hand clapping. Yeah, I can um, do that. Can you do it? Get you... Oh, no, that's two hands. That's uh, two... No, I can't do it with one hand. <laughs> can you not? This is mine. All right, well done, Ninja Master. Yeah, I think, right. uh, I, think I must be a black belt and not yeah. even know it. Yeah, let's leave that scene behind quickly. Um, <laughs> i tell you what you mentioned in the plot summary as well a uh, return of our old buddies the October Guard now that came out of left field oh yeah the, the October Guard and it, yeah. Yeah, it, it was a little bit out of uh, left field there um, and it's it's almost a bit like uh, a, an error almost um, that we could explain let me let me play a new jingle that explains that who's that what's that you don't know what you're doing, but I saw a mistake. Something wrong with the drawing, and I spot an old Joe. I thought that he had died. Hmm, bit shifty. Explain this, give it a no, no price. price. Yeah, so it's the return of four of the original October Guard. We've got Colonel Breakoff, Stormovic, Charge, and Horror Show. The four that had originally died in Special Missions 26. In, you know, quite a dramatic way and yes. what are they doing back what do you think chief uh, obviously the answer is larry's forgot <laughs> and and for some reason editorial did not pick that up mm. and probably because they haven't read those i don't know tom waltz is editing still is he surely yeah. he's read all the old marvel issues mm, um you'd hope so th- i don't you could no prize it by saying that they were such key figures in this um in what they did in the circles they travel in that there were a certain group of individuals who had some kind of face change technology um to to make enemies and other establishments around the world believe that the october guard were still around if if we if we assume for a minute that this just wasn't a, a complete cock up and larry forgot that that they had died then there's a, I, there's, I've got a few potential theories and ways of explaining it, and, and one or a mixture of them could could be what ends up happening. And while most of the things that we've seen back, you know, people come back before, they've been relatively trivial. I mean, sneak peek was fairly egregious, given that, that there was a whole issue devoted to his his death. But the likes of Crank Case, for example, um, his 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 he was only ever a peripheral. Um, figure in in the story he only appeared in a very very small bit part and when he died again it was in the panel where multiple joes get shot at the same time and it wasn't you know a a big thing made out of his his singular death whereas the october guard clearly these were these were characters that larry had a real affinity for he made this big you know issue of of them dying in in special missions issue 26 and they also made a big issue of the October Guard returning with a new lineup without the the ones who had died and, and you know we've we saw that in the original run and also subsequently in the, in the IDW run we've seen the um, October Guard come back without uh, without those original four so theory one could be they just survived their fatal mission um you know that the wounds weren't quite as bad as we were led to believe believe which you know is a little bit bullshit but there we go could be yeah. one theory two related to some sort of cloning or life model decoy or android something to do with russian technology so in issue 146 which was the star brigade story the joes and the uh, russians go into space to fight on that meteor and red star appears and in a somewhat throwaway line they say that he looks exactly like colonel brekov yes and that subplot was never explained so so potentially there's some technology that the russians are using to uh to bring back the october guard and continue to use them even when they're they're not they've not died so so maybe these are you know fakes with uh with implanted memories um you know it's all a bit x many and yep. wolverine but that kind of thing has been done in uh in in uh, larry's stories over in over in wolverine and stuff like that so 
something like that and it, and it could also potentially be tied in with theory three revanche so revanche have all got this cloning technology and that they've not cloning perhaps but cy- cybernetic technology which might uh which has been hinted at stretches back into the into the distant past before we probably found out about it in the in the main book so uh and and indeed there was connections over to a russian ninja clan wasn't there yes, so correct. um it might be that somehow it's tied in with revanche technology which has either brought them back to life or turned them into cyborgs or something like that theory four could be evolving continuity where larry just doesn't want to be t- held and tied to existing uh, continuity and somewhat like some of the marvel stuff you know what happened in the past is somewhat fluid and we'll just get new things yep so so yeah i uh, i hope that we'll uh, we'll see um some uh, some legs on this plot that it gets properly explained down the line and not just uh <laughs> not just looked at as a as yeah. a accident it, it seems odd to, to kind of bring bring the whole unit back and not really do anything with them in this storyline yeah so i mean part of what i think these four issues are doing is sort of just moving pieces around on the chessboard ready for uh the the big um snake eyes snake hunt okay plot. just so, getting so all the pieces in place to ex- then exactly and yeah, have you read it all up to have you finished it i've not quite finished snake hunt but uh, okay. i've read some some of it yeah okay i've got all i've got i've got it all um but how, like you said I, i'm only i haven't re- read it up so i'm just where we are at the moment so we'll see what shakes out there also i tell you what let's have a quick chat about snake eyes and sean okay what did you think was going on there they give him a birthday cake and <laughs> scarlet's crying and it's just not very good is it what what's, what's i don't understand yeah it was a very weird um sequence that is uh we're in 265 here where where he's given yeah so for just very quickly they in 264 they bust up a terrorist cell in the statue of liberty don't they they do they bust up a terrorist cell and they also have another weird exchange where they're fussing about sean's code name yeah. throwdown where uh low light says well it's better than snake eyes light yeah um and he's reminded again call call him um snake eyes when he's in combat yeah. but then doesn't um, scarlet call him sean <laughs> And then in the next panel, Scarlet calls him Sean. Yeah. Which is, yeah, what's that all about? Yeah. Um, she's getting on my yeah, nerves, Scarlet. I used to like nonsense. her, but she's been a bit of a dick. Um, <laughs> but anyway, yeah, so closed at Granny's Toy Shop, closed for a private party. Uh, Milo's there, just looking to eat all the um, all the jelly and the hors d'oeuvres. Jelly? Orange jelly! Yeah, yeah. and um, there's a birthday cake. He blows out the candles, hugs Dawn, and Scarlet cries. Okay. <laughs> yeah right, so so he lifts up his mask to uh blow the candles and it's it's worth yeah it's almost going around seeing what the expressions are on the faces as they go around and see see his face uh, while they blow out so scarlet kind of has got a almost wistful expression jinx is a little bit shocked as is budo dawn seems to be looking over at Mm, I don't know. Might be Budo, might be um, Sean, and looking a little bit surprised, but not horrified. Granny's like, um, "Yeah, there's my boy." Yeah, Granny is just eyes full of love. There, he looks like looks like she's throwing up in her mouth, and uh, Raymond is is not being particularly uh, zen about the whole thing. He's uh, sort of screwing up his his face. Yeah, and then yeah, Dawn goes in for a big old hug with uh, Sean, and uh, yeah. Scarlet is starts crying little yeah. little tiny scarlet tears to, to herself yeah, is, that, is that is that is that just sadness that that it's Sean's birthday and not snake eyes or is it some sort of potentially jealousy that of uh that Dawn? Dawn's got this connection with who Sean that who knows? we'll never know. find out because Larry will forget <laughs> uh okay <laughs> well you know uh, I think we've covered most of the plot stuff there but uh, there's still a few things to discuss about these issues I spy with my little eye. So I spy uh, Kalingaville, where the October Guard were. Yes. Kalingaland. That was a few special uh, missions activity there, exactly. was it? Exactly. Special missions number 10 yeah. um, uh, in Equatorial 
Africa. Right. I also spotted a new character that we'd not seen before. Yes. Give you a hint. It's in the Dreadnought scene in 265 in the bar. Uh, yeah, I noticed there's a couple of, there's a few people at the bar that I thought, okay, fine. There's Rogue Pig, Xandar, Zorana, Zanzibar, Norgahide, Ripper, Buzzer. Uh, looks like Thrash is on the end there. I don't know the barman. And it uh, looks like Torch there. But there's a guy in... The, the only guy I don't doesn't look like I know is the guy with his back to us opposite the barman, blonde hair. Who's that? Not sure. Is that Torch, perhaps? I think it's Torch to the right, isn't it? With the shades Oh, I on. thought that might be Monkey Wrench to the right. Okay, maybe that's yeah. Monkey Wrench. Okay, maybe that is Torch then. So I think we know everyone in this scene then, don't we? Apart from the barman. We know him, but it's Norgahide's first... Ara appearance. Ah, okay, interesting. There you go. Well so done. I spied. Never, yeah, never appeared in the uh, Ara universe before. I think he's appeared in Devil's Due and in uh, Dick animated uh, Dick animated series. Very good. Uh, but Might yeah, as well never be Dick appeared before. Uh, we also get the I think the first use of the name Aspid here, unless we had that before in an in issue but um right but there it is it's named for uh aspid is used as a name as a, of a spanish automobile manufacturer who in turn uh, derived their name from the viper species uh vipera Aspi- aspis found in northern spain very good um brekov's fake name that he gives that he's using um at the moment as a deep cover is alexi Krasniesvagda. Yes. <laughs> yes, it is. Shall I try that one again? No, no, don't do it. And where do we recognise um, that from then? Well, as you know, Chief, uh, Krasniesvagda is the official newspaper of the uh, Russian Ministry of Defence. Of course, everyone knows that. Yep. Yep, of course. There you go. Good and uh, there was what, what I found funny was these uh, domestic terrorists that that we've got sort of in the Statue of of Liberty. And, uh, yeah, so I think playing up some of the themes that that Larry's had before about some of the the elements at home causing, uh, yeah, disruption. And um, they they talk about uh, that America's, you know, gone wrong ever since they had the commie poem that was installed on the base of Statue of Liberty. Right, and what they're referring to there is the the New Colossus, which is a sonnet by American poet Emma Lazarus, who wrote the poem in eighteen eighty three to raise money for the construction of the pedestal for the Statue of Liberty, and it was uh, yeah cast into a bronze plaque and mounted on the pedestal, and the the words of the poem uh, famously include the the words "Give me your tired, your poor, your huddled masses yearning to breathe." Uh, A.K.A. Commie Pinko Shit. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, and meanwhile, uh, Horror Show was branching out into his civilian identity with a uh, Chitkama and Borscht Parlour. Can you imagine what might be going on in that parlour, Chief? Mm, Chitkama and Borscht. Isn't Borscht... That's, I've had that before. Isn't that like a sort of cabbagey kind of, um, like a, you, you put it on stuff. <laughs> it's like a sort of, you, you know, uh, I don't know. Um, so I, he's having, he's in an ice cream parlour. <laughs> no, I, I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> okay. You were, you, were get, you were getting, uh, you were getting close. You, uh, it was, uh, the Borscht was a beetroot uh, soup. Okay. And and uh, the uh, the first one was a uh, chitkama was a Georgian soup, so yeah, it's a soup specialist okay. parlor. Very good, very good. Uh, that, that also sells ice cream, of course. Yes, yes. <laughs> okay. Um, I know you uh, mentioned about a goof earlier with the October Guard, but uh, spot anything else? Error detected. Error detected. No prize incoming. Yeah, there was one more goof that I detected, which was uh, just a weird in- inconsistency with the vamp as it appeared. And this is really, as you say, uh, picking uh, picking out peanuts. But uh, it's just a weird inconsistency with the vamp. In the first panel, it appears to have the original machine gun thingy. And then in the subsequent panels, it has the missile rack of the vamp Mark II. Um, so, yeah, this is quibbling at the edges. But... Okay. 
There we go. Shall I quiz you on some colloquialisms? Yeah, go for it. There used to be a pudding that was over-egged. You know the pudding. You know the pudding. At first it was British, but then it was Commonwealth. You know the pudding. You know the pudding. But now there's a new player in town. A comic book writer of of some renown. He's using real world examples and peppering the issues with with lots of samples. It's a Larry Hammer colloquialism. He's talking G.I. Joe and all its heroism. Can you guess what it is? Is it something new? Now listen as Larry drops a slice of real life on you. So in the subway scene with um, Raymond and Milo. They talk about uh, spotting Miyawara calluses. What do you think is a Miyawara? Uh, is that is that that big kind of um, that wooden standing block thing that they punch and kick? Oh, Chiefy. Yeah, boy. It is yeah. the padded striking post used an ar- martial arts tool, so hence punching it up and getting cal- calluses Very on good. Uh, your old hands. And we talked about another one before, which was uh, which was where they said, let's beat feet out of dodge. So getting out of dodge, where where do we think this comes from, Chief? Getting out of dodge. Dodge City, USA, somewhere. Yeah, we, so, so I'm going to give you uh, a single bing for, for that one, I think. Okay, uh, I'll take it. <laughs> uh, so it's a reference to Dodge City, Kansas, which was a favourite location for Westerns. Uh, and most memorably, the phrase was often used in the TV show Gunsmoke, right. in which villains were commanded to get the hell out of Dodge. Mm. So, uh, yeah, just, you know, entered the man- vernacular from uh, via that TV show. Very but, good. Uh, OK, now uh, we're going to move on to favourite dialogue, and Chief's actually got two this week. Quote of the week, 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 quote of the week. Whoa, whoa, whoa. I, I wonder if I've got one of the same. But okay, all right, we'll, we'll, we'll buttress it up or sandwich it, whatever it is. So I'll go first, then you, then me. So I'm okay. going to 264, and this is a line from Scarlet. Uh, no, it is Scarlet. So basically, they've gone into the Statue of Liberty, they've uh, taken out a load of dudes, and Scarlet shot a guy through the wrist with a crossbow, and then she says, the only place you're going is the general population where there's a rusty shank in the showers waiting for you. So basically, this guy's going to get macked up in the showers. She don't give two shits. In fact, in fact she's gunning for it. She's the one with the shank. She's infiltrating that prison. Going to get him. Um, what have you got? Oh, Scarlet, cold blooded. Um, I have got Cobra Commander to yes. uh, Mindbender while they're golfing, and he says, "I know it's a long putt, Mindbender, but it doesn't require airing out your armpits for five minutes." <laughs> yeah, good one. I like that. I like that. Um, my one is Alpha 001. Zero, 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 um, you can rage all you want inside your head, but you are utterly powerless to do anything but obey our commands. I will now switch over to simulated laugh mode. Ha 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 ha. Oh, and then there's another panel. Yes. Ha 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 ha. <laughs> Very good, very good. Um, <laughs> Laugh mode activated. Now, um, as always, uh, we need to switch to this segment, which is pointless because it never happens. Hit it. Where's Marley? Where's Marley? Where, 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 where's Marley? I, I don't mind. I don't mind skipping it, Chief. It's 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 fine. We can we can leave. Uh, we can leave. Where's Marley? It, okay. It's, it's fine. Okay. It's fine. It good. really is. Good. Well, I've already played the jingle, so uh, um, let's hope you well, get some in Snake Hunt. May, maybe there's some Molly in uh, in Destro's fake hands. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> um, right, we'll be covering that missing issue. Was it 263 in a bonus episode coming to you very soon? But we should probably yo jo this one. How many cans? A Yo-Jo Cola? You're doling out for this artificial intelligence. See, I think I quite liked it, but it was just a little bit bitty. And as I say, yes, sort of set up. moving around the uh, chess pieces, getting getting things ready for for the next arc, almost. So, poof. I think if the, if it had been paced slightly differently, and think you know maybe like grouping up grouping up the end of that that previous mission with the with the last one, and sort of starting with a bit more of a fresh palette, yeah. it might have worked slightly better. Um, 
maybe maybe six and a half for this one. I did enjoy it, but but yeah, six it was, and a half. It, funky bunch from the helmet. Uh, Chief going in five point five. Uh, didn't enjoy it. Uh, too bitty. Um, yeah, not for me. Uh, like I say, though, more opportunities for Chief to grade up on a curve. Coming up soon with a bonus episode, then on to Snake Hunt. I think we'll probably Snake Hunt 10-parter, maybe split that into three parts. Yeah. What do you might, think for the show? Do it. Okay, mm-hmm. good stuff. Uh, after talking about these, these comics, let's cleanse the palate, and you're going to tell me about a toy. Mark talks about toys, ho, ho. He talks about G.I. Joe. He talks about all the toys from the comic book and the animated show. Mark talks about toys. Mark talks about toys. First, you have to guess it. See if you can maintain your perfect score of guessing it first time. Now then. Now then. (laughs) Is it Jimmy Savile? This is... Please don't. This has been discussed... Ah, Noggerhide! Oh, jeez. Yeah! I was going to... I was going to go for a member of the October Guard. And even though it's been discussed on this show, I can never remember if they actually made figures of those um, characters. I think most of them have now been made, but but not in the yeah. original okay, run. Fine. So it was okay. uh, redone as a classic. Norgahide, tell us about him. So Norgahide from 1989, which was actually not a bad year still for Joe. We got, we got quite a lot of cool characters in that year. So he was... A dreadnought poacher. Let's see what the file card has to say about yeah. him. Norgahide could have single-handedly decimated the herds of all of the endangered species of Africa, including Kalingaland, if his fellow poachers hadn't railroaded him off the continent for cheating at cards, being generally obnoxious, and smelling bad. He was subsisting on his earnings as a freelance fur stealer when he was recruited by the dreadnoughts at an all-night donut and grapes soda shop. Wow. <laughs> he takes his hunting and tracking very seriously. Norgahide won't bathe for a month before he goes out into the bush so that the animals will not smell the soap on his body. Mm. He greases himself with rancid hog, hog fat, eats what he can trap, and shoot in the wild. Norgahide does all of this so that the chemical additives of processed food will not alter his body chemistry and scare the game off with too human a scent. It's a good thing he is basically antisocial. I think he'd be antisocial whether he liked it or not, to be honest. Yes, yes. Who we? I was going to say, am I remembering rightly that is it this one that you had, or maybe? Yeah, yeah. Covered this one on a toy box episode. In your uh, toy box. In my toy box. Yeah, yeah. I had. I've sold him since, but I had uh, fully all all his equipment and stuff, and he comes with a lot of stuff. Um, you he know, does, quite impressive yeah. display of stuff. He's got that boot knife thing. Uh, he's got yeah. quite his bow, his quiver. Um, what else did he come with? Sniper rifle? Yeah, he's got this yeah big sort of hunting rifle, I, I guess it yeah. is, uh, like an elephant gun maybe or something. And Clyde, he's got is it? A, uh, Clyde, his, his wild pet boar. He's got a wrist-attached machete. That's right. Uh, and he's got a, a really cool hat yes. as uh, as well. And, um, yeah, he was one of my favourite figures because, yeah, he was just, he was, um, I guess, ripped. So he was looking, he looked like a really tough guy who uh, properly matched up to to the joes and uh, around about that time as well the like wwf wrestling was getting really yes. big and they sort of that roided up uh look was i guess quite <laughs> popular so he he looks uh you know if you compare the look of norgai to some of the very early joes he, he looks quite significantly different because of uh you know that different body shape yes yes i think i don't think i was a massive fan of him when i had him because he wasn't much in the comics or he wasn't in the comics full stop and i think that was where i was getting my love from gi joe and i think i was at the tail end of the toy era for me so i wasn't a massive fan but now having revisited him on that toy box episode even though i've since sold him um i think i had a bit more love for him but just didn't have any nostalgic attachment to him but um a great figure with loads of accessories um kind of a fun background and you know there was definitely possibilities to utilize him a lot more or at all in you know in the, yeah, in the surprising comic surprising that yeah. it took so long for him to turn up and um and tim finn over on his blog at a real real american book.com he he did uh, a posting around uh, norgahide relatively recently he shared uh, the artist mark pennington's sculpt figure input design 
um, which was cool to see. And, and in that picture, it looked like um, what they were going for with his moustache was kind of almost like a tusk look to it. Like, you know, with his walk warthog having those those tusks that kind of mirroring that in his his own face. And actually yeah. an early code name for Norgahide was Warthog. Oh, right. um, but it, that, that name did get used earlier on, uh, obviously, for uh, Sergeant Slaughter's uh, sort of tank transport vehicle um, the year before. Um, and the word Norgahide is, uh, I, th- I thought, as, as Tim did, that it was kind of a real world kind of description of a kind of particular, you know, leather or, you know, hide of, a, of an animal. Yes. Um, but it's not. It, uh, it comes from the uh, word Norgahide um, with a capital N, uh, which is a registered trademark, and it's a kind of synthetic lever. And in the the company's advertising, they invented a, a fictional animal called the Norga, uh, which is kind of like a I can't I don't know how you might describe it. Sort of a, a large where the wild things are type looking uh, sort of leathery uh, creature that, that they sort of had some fun with in their advertising, right. saying that's where the, the, the hide came from. Um, yeah, so everyday school day. Cool. Very good. Um, like that. There'll be more toys next week. And now it's time for listener questions. Question, tell me what you think about TV. Do you buy toys and buy other things? Who's your favourite guy from that movie? What are the UK pedestrian crossings? Question, what did we ask this week? Let's find out as we speak. So what happened this week? We asked you to give us the um, basis for a new segment and then me and the helmet, sorry, the funky bunch, had to write a jingle to go along with said segment and then we would discuss and decide if that would be recurring or in the bin. We had some uh, yeah. some interesting suggestions. Yeah, we did. It was some it gave some fun, imaginative ideas, and and I think yeah, we should sort of stretch this out. Maybe do um, you know, next couple of weeks we could have a, a new segment uh, from the those suggestions. Yeah, of the next couple of weeks and and try them out. See if any of them stick. We'll see. I've got no interest in writing more jingles. <laughs> I can do the jingle and you. Okay, I like it. You can play the game. Yeah, so, and in fact, uh, the one we've gone for is, uh, in fact, I'm going to tell you the ones that I like that we didn't choose. Um, Bart had an interesting one about WTF. Now, uh, this could relate to something that's happened in the comic and you're just wondering what is that character doing or why has Larry written that or even a toy. I thought that had a bit of legs. Uh, my favourite one, I think, was... Was this from Todd or Chris? It was a PvP, player versus player. Um, and this was take a Joe and a Cobra, put them in a fighting pit. Who's going to come out the winner? Fight your case for your chosen character. Uh, I thought that was that could have been a good jingle, and I think that'd be a lot of fun to discuss the merits of that. But there was also another good one that I did like, and that was hat-based. Who, who had the hat-based one for us? That came from Todd. Todd, okay. okay. Yeah, so he, his, his idea was basically... Joe and Cobra hats, have at it, you know. Yes, yes. <laughs> Do something with that. <laughs> yeah, okay, we will. Well, we did, in fact. We wrote a jingle each, and uh, we're going to play them for you now. It's super hats on the Joes and also on the Cobras. Even if the size of it is something quite atrocious. If you style it out enough, you'll always look ferocious. Super hats are on the Joes and also on the Cobras. Super hats on the Joes and also on the Cobras. Okay, there's Funky Bunch's effort. I tell you what, I do like that. I will be surprised if you do not win. Okay, get ready, Jim Godfrey, on that fast forward 15 second button, because here comes my effort. Welcome to the hat rack. We got the inside track. Welcome to the hat rack. This is the hat soundtrack. Let's kick it off with the class of 1982 hard hats flash and grunt having fun hard hats rock and roll version one hard hats zap break a short fuse hard hats and cobra troopers too now there are guys who rock a beret with style they are fresh like peppermint stock a falcon and arm and flint if you need to feel like you are special and real we can sure make a deal with Molly Bendium Steel. If you're in a blood shed, a genetic amalgamous purebred, just get a snake on your head. But Serpentor's dead! Hat rack! 
Welcome to the Hat Rack. Hat Rack. Compute your angle of attack. Hat Rack. Welcome to the Hat Rack. Hat Rack. Don't have a panic attack. Firefly Beachhead and ninjas, they wear face masks. Hat Rack. Welcome to the Hat Rack. Hat Rack. Sleeping masks for insomnia. Hat Rack. Welcome to the Hat Rack. Hat Rack. Let's get this thing back on track. If you're going underwater, you'll need some special gear. Breathing. Torpedo and the eels. Operators. Wetsuit and deep six. We have plenty of star. That incites fear and shark. All your vipers will flock. Frag laser and rock. Ice cyber and heat. Aerosol, sand and range. Tele techno and sludge. And the astro won't budge. Hat rack. Welcome to the hat rack. Hat rack. Do you need biofeedback? Hat rack. Welcome to the hat rack. Hat rack. Don't be a sad sack. So whatever your style, come stay for a while. Joe Cobra or the enemy? A hat is what you need. Hat rack. Welcome to the hat rack. Hat rack. This is the hat soundtrack. Hmm. Well, mm. I don't know what to say about that. Um, <laughs> yeah, well, it's, it's, it's certainly a... Long, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, listen, uh, have you got a hat you'd like to discuss uh, today, sir? Okay. In the blue corner, we have got Major Blood's hat. Okay, interesting, interesting. So, do you want? shall I tell you mine, and then we kind of talk about the merits of each okay. hat? In the red corner, it is Ricondo's flappy kind of hat thing. <laughs> I like I like the level of research you've done on this one. <laughs> research zero because I forgot I had to pick a hat and I picked it about five seconds ago. Um, listen, I like Ricondo's hat because I think it looks pretty stylish. Now, when you first see that guy in the comic, he's kind of right in the bush, isn't he? He's got the Takuros yeah, yeah. with him and they ambush the Joes and he's their contact because they're going to rescue Adele Burkhart and, you know, he's got this... It's like a... You know, like, kind of wild billish, not a cowboy hat, but it's kind of, I don't know. I don't know who would normally wear that kind of hat, but one side is kind of pinned up and I've got no idea the purpose of that thing is. Had I done some research, I would have been able to tell you. And it is called a slouch hat. A slouch hat, um, yes. And it is strongly associated with the Australian uh, army. Okay. Oh, yeah, I think I've seen Mel Gibbo wear one in, um, what's that movie he's in? Oh, it's a place... Oh, that's pissing me off now. What's that movie? It's a good movie. It's a good movie. <laughs> it's WW2, isn't it? Um, yeah, the slouch hat was first worn by the Victorian Mounted Rifles in 1885. It was originally worn with the right side looped up to make it easier for marching troops to perform the eyes right command in parades. Uh, but yeah, it was adopted more commonly uh, and became eventually more common for, for have the left side turned up oh. and um yet yeah, in the uh australian version of gi joe uh they actually had uh ricondo as their central kind of gi joe character in much of the way same way that maybe in the uk we had duke or, or flint in the in gallipoli the incarnations. gallipoli that's what it's called <laughs> very, very good <laughs> first world war as well not ww2 anyway and sorry, uh, carry on. and and yeah, so so they had uh, they had Ricondo as their their main guy, sort of introducing uh, the 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 GI Joes, uh, and they renamed him Digger and made him a uh, an Australian Australian GI Joe. Mm. Oof. Okay. All right. Um, so so there we go. Anyway, cool uh, cool ass hat, like it, slouch hat. Now uh, talk to me about Major Bloods. Um, so so Major blood and in the toy i think he's basically you know what you might call the name of his hat is an atrocity it's it's like a kind of weird bucket thing uh looking almost like um the kind of thing that an old lady might wear in a in a hair saloon getting her her kale uh her her, um curls done or or whatnot her perm it's a yeah it's a pterodome Mm. Um, and and in the in the car in the in the different arc incarnations in the cartoon and and the the comic, um, it tends to be drawn in a slightly more stylized way. And in even it, it, indeed even on the the card art for the for the figure, it's a sort of a more of a helmeted uh, look. Yes. Um, but in terms of in terms of the actual V one toy, 
um, yeah, I don't think it's such a good look in it. In it, the the coolness of that toy exists a little bit more in I think the the player's imagination than necessarily in the toy itself. Yes, yes. Um, yeah, and indeed in the Battle Action Force version of uh, the uh, comic, Major Blood had a bit more of an authentic kind of visual representation of that that hat, looking more like a kind of squared off bucket um, that uh, as it appears on on the on the toy rather than more of the the, the angular uh, uh, helmet yes. uh, that, that we saw in the comics. Yeah. Um, listen, I am giving that bucket hat 4 out of 10 and I'm giving the slouch hat 9 out of 10. <laughs> okay, I wouldn't disagree. Let's, okay. let's go with that. Okay. We've got a consensus there. <laughs> yeah, okay, all right, very good. Very so good. Uh, Rakondo's, uh, Rakondo's hat goes uh, into the next round of the semifinals of the hat thing. The hat off, <laughs> yes, yes. Welcome to the, the hat, hat Welcome to the hat rack. Um Okay, so uh, more. Have we got a question for the listeners for next week, or what are we doing? Um, yeah, the question is: if you've got some more ideas for uh, for segments, and you want us to make a jingle out of them, then uh, get in touch in the normal places. Yes, uh, you can reply to the the, the threads. Uh, shoot us an email, shoot us a tweet, you know, whatnot. Just send it uh, attached to Voltar's Vulture. You yes. know, however you want to do, do it. it. Um, get it and and uh maybe we'll we'll try and uh have another uh segment yeah. where maybe just the uh the funky bunch makes a jingle <laughs> we'll make you famous i'll make you famous we'll make you famous to quote billy the kid uh well i might have a go at a jingle i might just go for a short one this time uh, next time we'll see we'll see long rain myself in um well, good show. We covered a lot of ground there, Funky Bunch. Uh, we're full of uh, Christmas dinner. Uh, we need to search out some cheap mince pies. Um, <laughs> I am all out of alcohol, so I need to go and rectify that ASAP. And um, when all is said and done, we'll catch you down the road. Because we've been talking Joe. And we're all out of Joes wearing hats. <laughs> and buckets. And buckets, yeah. Get that bucket off your head. Laders. Someone called Bucketheads. Does someone call... Is that a reference to someone calling troops Bucketheads in some geek culture show or not? Hey, Buckethead. Let us know. Write in and let us know. Right, we're going now. Definitely. Bye.